Hey, developers, uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining in on this one. I think it's going to be a pretty good video. Obviously, obviously, I think that, right? Or I wouldn't make it. Um, but this is something that I really wish I had understood better when I was starting off as um, a real kind of fundamental intro to the analysis of algorithms. So what I wanted to do is intersperse, and this will probably take me through 2022, um, is in addition to the videos that we've been making on design patterns and some other videos on computer science fundamentals and apex uh, things that i wish i had known when i was starting and i think most self-taught programmers don't know when they're starting off uh, and if you were watching anything i have to say on youtube you are probably a self-taught programmer just like me so full disclosure uh, i do not have a computer science degree for the most part i'm just a guy that you know watches videos and reads books like you uh, I am going back to school for a bachelor, or not a bachelor, a master's in software development. So I do get to do a little more of this in an academic setting now. Uh, but, and I think some of it is, is theoretical. And maybe you argue how, val how valuable is it to you in your day-to-day -day work. But what we want to talk about today, I think is kind of that basic, how do we, how do we analyze the efficiency of an algorithm? How, what do we mean when we say, you know, big O notation? And we're going to do that using the bubble sort algorithm, which is, I think, a pretty easy algorithm to understand, basic sorting algorithm. Um, and I think it's really useful because I see the same sort of construct all the time, particularly with uh, more junior developers code. And so because bubble sort, the performance of bubble sort does degrade very, very quickly. I thought it made a great video, uh, maybe to lead in with the series about of kind of a what not to do type thing. So we're going to kind of bounce back and forth on this one a little bit between the code and a little bit between probably an article on Geeks for Geeks that has some better charts. And we're, we are going to talk about bubble sort. We are going to talk about big O notation and algorithm analysis. Hopefully this is useful. If it, if, it, if it is not, please let me know in the comments and how I can make this better because I think it's really important. I will re-record this video if you guys all think it's a bomb. All right, so let's open up uh, Illuminated Cloud here. And we have got bubble sort. For tonight, I have the, and I think when I do these types of videos, I will have the code just up on the screen ready to go. Um, I'll have a link to the repo I've been making for this series on GitHub, you are free to star, fork, check it out, even contribute if you would like. Uh, I'd like to make it a great resource for the community. So bubble sort is a basic sorting algorithm. Right? And it, this is kind of one of the fundamental problems in computer science is sorting stuff. All right? And bubble sort relies on a nested for loop. And the reason I decided to pick that tonight was because that's a construct I see a lot in more junior programmers code uh, because it's, I mean, it, it, you know, the computer science, the term of art would be the naive implementation. It, it makes sense and it works. So it is correct, right? It, it works, um, but it is not the best implementation that you could come up with. And that's because anything with a nested for loop runs at O of N squared. And we're going to talk about what that means in a little bit, but essentially like, if you're talking about a, a small data set like here, we have, you know, 10 integers, it's not going to matter. But the bigger the, the set of inputs that you throw into your algorithm, if it is a, a bubble sort, a nested for loop, that performance is going to degrade quickly. And it's all about really that nested for loop. So let's just talk about how does this work and why does this why does this happen? Why does the performance degrade so quickly? Uh, all right. So we have our first for loop. Right, so we've passed in our integers to sort. And I've got, you know, this little just make-believe list here in the comments that we can look at for an example. And so let's so we are going to set our unsorted index to integers to sort dot size minus one. All right, and so this is uh important bubble sort is like a lot of sorting algorithms is going to break this this list, this collection, into a sorted Part and an unsorted partition, right? So the, initial, the first time initially, like the whole thing is unsorted. So there is no, I'm going to say sorted partition. So that's why the unsorted index in this case, because we're passing in um, a list with size 10, right? So our index is going to be size minus one or nine. 
So there would be no sorted partition yet. We're saying, hey, as long as that index is greater than zero, and then minus minus, we're going to decrement it every time through. Now, boom, we have got our nested for loop. So what that means is, so I go down to 18. So that's, that's the number at index zero. So we drop down to 18, i of zero, i less than unsorted index, i plus plus. And we're now going to essentially compare and we're going to evaluate every number in that list. So if we're passing in, in this case, an input of a list with, an, with 10 items. So we're gonna say we're inputting in 10 items. It doesn't, there's not just 10 steps that it takes to evaluate this and to sort it. There are 100 steps, right? Because think of it like a matrix, right? And I love that and <clears throat> I will share, pardon me, I'm going to have a drink from the, uh, from the fine folks at Polar Seltzer, brewed here in Massachusetts, uh, who should be sponsoring these videos. All right, so we're down here, right? And we are in this nested for loop. So what that means is we have 10 items and we have to come, we have to do each one of these 10 times. So hopefully right there, you can see how this starts, the performance here starts to degrade real quickly, right? So if we have, if we increase this, we pass in 20 items, it doesn't, we didn't just double the number of steps. It actually went from 100 to 400, right? So the, the graph of the increase in the number of steps related to the number of inputs, you can see it shoots up very quickly. And that's why we say this is, you know, an N squared algorithm, O of N squared. Because what we're really looking at when we analyze an algorithm and we talk about its performance, not necessarily just how fast is it. I mean, obviously that'll be a byproduct of it, but that can depend on a lot of things, right? What kind of what kind of what kind of computer are we running this on? What's the server load right now? Lots of things can affect just pure speed. So to just kind of have kind of an abstract idea of about you know how efficient is this, right? We'll use big O notation, and big O is generally kind of to represent the upper bound of an algorithm's performance. Um, not the best case scenario where what might happen if we get lucky, but the upper bound. Uh, so this we can say, hey, this is going to take the number of inputs squared is going to be the performance of this algorithm. So again, because we can say, I guess we should keep we should keep talking through it. We didn't even get to the next method. Uh, sorry, I got all bogged down in that nested in that second for loop. So we're going to bubble the larger value to the end of the array. And what that means is it's going to compare. So in this case, it's going to compare our first trip through. It's going to compare 18 to 9. All right. 18 position I is greater than the index at I plus 1. So swap. All right. And it's going to pass down the list. And it's going to pass the value 18. And it's going to pass the value of 9. And to to swap their places, and this, this you may actually see this as an interview question at some point, right? You're gonna need this temporary variable here. And you are gonna, in this case, right, we're gonna assign it the value of 18. It's just a placeholder. We are now going to make uh, the ith index of a rate of sort position zero, right? We're gonna make that equal to the value at j, right? That was nine, we're swapping them. And then uh, the array to sort at j, which was just, you know, i plus one, that now equals 18. So we've swapped them and we'll keep going through. So we would swap then, right? Like 18 is bigger than zero, swap. All right, and then we would get to, um, it's not greater. So we would stop 75, 75, they're equal. All right, so they would, we would keep swapping. And at the end of this, 145 would end up being the number that would be in the last index of our array. That would be the sorted partition. The unsorted partition would now decrement, right? It was nine, it's now eight. And we would repeat the whole process over. So if we take a look at this in uh, uh, Geeks for Geeks, all right, scroll up and make everybody seasick, right? Um, big O analysis of algorithms is just, it's a term used to express the complexity of an algorithm. And I said the upper bound. Um, and there's a few that I feel like ever you, you need to understand, uh, and you'll and these are the common runtimes for most of the algorithms you'll encounter. For most of the code you'll write, uh, a constant time 
method. Um, o of one, no matter what, it takes the same amount, right? So if if I gave, if I could give our bubble sort algorithm, it didn't matter if I gave it 10 inputs, a thousand inputs, it took, you know, one step, right? Uh, that's constant time. Linear function, I think, you know, that is for each input, steps in, you know, steps execute. So I would think the classic example, right? Linear search. If I have, if I am, if I was trying to guess a number one through 10 and I just said, you know, and I just started, you know, at the position zero, you know, and worked my way through, that would be a linear search. And then uh, quadratic time, which is what we just talked about for bubble sort, is order of n squared. So if we go down and we take a look at the, uh, the graph here, right, we can see, so here is our O of n squared. So you can see how the performance, you know, as you pass more inputs to that algorithm, how quickly the number of steps, it just really explodes versus typically what you'll kind of try to achieve is a log n, right? Logarithmic time. And, and we'll do, uh, when we do another video on the binary search or something, we'll talk about log n. So let's switch back over to the code. Um, we're gonna run our test. Let's just make sure this all works. So we're gonna pass it in and we are going to assert when this runs that the index at zero, the value at index zero should be equal to negative 22, which is currently the value at index nine. And that the last item in our list should be 145, which is actually just the second to last now. So let's run it, see what we get. All right, so that's it, it passes. It, and I think this is a simple algorithm to understand. And really what I want the takeaway from this to be is not, hey, I'm gonna go implement bubble sort tomorrow. Um, I never have, uh, I don't know, maybe it's useful to tuck in your back pocket for a, for a silly job interview at some point. But what I really want you to understand if you're, especially if you're a new program, is why generally a nested for loop is kind of, to me, it's a code smell right away. I'm, you know, it, in, in Salesforce, and I'll, I'll provide a really good uh, link to a really great article from David Reed about this. Generally, for most things when we're the, where, where I see a nested for loop, the much, much better implementation would have been to compare two maps. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll do something maybe later or actually just read David Reed's article that I will share in the, uh, in the comment or in the description below. And uh, I think this hopefully will all be clear and hopefully is something you can uh, implement right away tomorrow. So again, this was kind of a big topic. It's something new um, for this channel. So please let me know what you thought. Let me know if you thought it was helpful, how I could make it better. I uh, really hope to hear from you in the comments and I'll see everybody soon. Take